I generally make all of my own backgrounds, textures um, and ba brushes. Uh, my granddaughters love splashing heaps of paint around on some art paper and from that I photograph them and make brushes. This is one of those splatters that the girls made and I'm going to turn it into a splatter brush. So I've opened my image. Now we cannot make a brush out of an image that is any larger than 2500 pixels. So I'm going to have to go in and resize this image. So I go into image, image size. Now it's the longest measurement is height so I'll change that to 2500 pixels. I've chosen pixels here and I'll click OK. It's still going to make me a nice big brush. I prefer to always go as big as I can because you can always make a brush smaller. So now I need to get rid of this grey background to define my brush. I'll use the magic wand tool for that. It's over here. Sometimes it's behind the quick select tool. So I'll choose my magic wand. I'll look at the tolerance up here and if I choose tolerance 20 which is there from where I chose before and I click, it doesn't select all of the shades of grey there. So I'm going to change the tolerance there up to about 50. Click in that area, click and that's done a reasonable job of selecting it. I want these little bits in here as well so I'll hold the shift key and click there and click there. If I click there it selects too much so I'll just go control Z and I might change the tolerance back down to about 10 then hold the shift key again and click in this area here. Not having, yes there we are, I've picked up that little bit. Now I need to paint white over all of that background. Um, so I need white as my brush colour. I can switch from foreground to background there or I can hit X on the keyboard to change. This is hitting X on the keyboard to change my foreground and background colours. Then I just need a brush and I will paint over that area. And then I can Control D to deselect. The new versions of Photoshop will make a brush out of that even though it is coloured previously. They did like us to have a desaturated image but it seems to work quite okay with a coloured image. So we can go ahead and define our brush. So we go up here to edit and we come down here to define brush preset and we can call this brush Splatter. We click OK and here's our brush. Now let's use our brush and see what it, how it works. So let's go over here to File, New and for our document type we'll make an A4 document. Click OK our piece of paper and here's our nice new brush. Let's give our brush a little bit of colour. We'll have a red brush. Oh, nice bright red. Click. And now why did it do that? Because our image mode is grayscale. So we need to make sure we've got RGB colour. And now we're, we've got a brush with a bit of a shadow. Now our brush we can just leave it like that and then change its colour here and make a green blob over our red blob. Or we can go into our brush properties and change some of the properties. So let's go into window and look at our brush settings. This brings up a box for our brush settings. And we have our tip shapes, we have our shape dynamics. When we click on there, we can move this jitter across a little bit. We can change our maximum diameter. We can change the angle of our jitter. And we can add a little bit of roundness. Here we might scatter the brushes a little bit. So let's click and see what we can do in scattering. 
we might scatter it in both directions. So if you look down here, you can see what's happening. And we might change the jitter a little. Now just for fun, we're going to go down here and we're going to change the colours as well. So let's click on our colour dynamics. And we've got foreground to background. So we'll leave it at that. Um, will we fade? Yes, we will. We'll have our hue jitter all around about there, our saturation quite high, and we'll get nice bright brushes and purity, and let's, let's go OK on that. So now let's go over here and choose, and we've got green as our background colour. Let's go over here and change our background colour to orange. Bearing in mind it's going to, as we paint with our brush, we'll bring it down a little bit in size. And we'll start to paint. And you'll notice it's splattering and turning while it does in different directions. Each time we tick, click, our brush changes. If we want to paint all over our page, we just drag our brush around. And then we have quite an interesting design there. Our colours changed. The direction of our brush changed. Very interesting brush. If we change back up here our shape dynamics and we move our shape jitter back this way. So we can play around with those shape dynamics and that's it. Have fun. Thank you.